Lewis, we've heard about gluten sensitivity for a long time. Gluten-free diets have become a fad. We have heard about people who explain, and I know many of these people, they, they don't really have celiac disease, but they think they have undiagnosed celiac disease, etc. In any case, we now have some really interesting data about so-called gluten sensitivity. In 2011, Peter Gibson, who's a professor of gastroenterology at Monash University and director of the GI unit at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, Australia, did a study that found gluten, which is a protein found in grains like wheat, rye, and barley, that gluten causes GI distress even in patients without formally diagnosed celiac disease. Uh, double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled experiment, one experiment, was one of the strongest pieces of evidence that, yes, there is this thing called gluten sensitivity, gluten intolerance. It is a genuine condition. However, the few years since this study saw this meteoric rise in people eating gluten-free diets, and it now the author of the study said, you know what? I think I really need to repeat this with an even stronger uh, level of rigor to really see if this is such a thing. So subjects were going to be provided in this new study with every single meal for the entire duration of the trial. Any and all potential dietary triggers for gastrointestinal symptoms would be removed. This includes lactose from milk products, preservatives like benzoates, propionates, sulfites, nitrites, all of these things that might confound the results of gluten intolerance. Uh, they were going to be also, and this part gets a little bit interesting, they were going to have nine days of all body waste matter collected. This is a study where they are not messing around, Lewis. They really want to make exactly sure whether gluten is a factor here. 37 subjects took part all with self-reported gluten sensitivity, and they were confirmed to not have celiac disease. They were first fed a diet that was um, low in FODMAPs, which are poorly absorbed short-chain carbohydrates, and then they were given one of three diets for a week. There was one that had 16 grams a day of added gluten. This is the high gluten diet, one with two grams of gluten and one with 14 grams of whey protein isolate, which is low gr gluten or a placebo that was protein that didn't contain any gluten. What they found was that there was no difference at all in terms of the symptoms that were exhibited by the low to high gluten diets and almost all of those who had a zero gluten diet reported identical gastrointestinal symptoms during that time. Hopkins uh, uh, Gibson still says that we need more of a study. 37 subjects is not uh, uh, fully conclusive, but now he is backing off of the claims that this gluten sensitivity is a real thing. And we have evidence here, very controversial evidence. I know many people who are on low or no gluten diets, and certainly I try to limit my carb intake, even if not for gluten specifically. Uh, there is now this study which says this thing is completely in people's minds. It is a placebo or a nocebo situation. I mean, I, I still think it's probably possible that someone could have a slight gluten allergy or something similar that's, that's messing with them. I think it's probably more likely that a lot of these people were just loading up on on flour and uh, things made from flour, a lot of empty carbs, and it might have just been messing with them. Um, I mean, I try to avoid that personally, and I, I find that it works well for me, but uh, I, I don't, certainly don't claim to have any type of gluten sensitivity. Yeah, I mean, would you agree that it's just become a very popular thing in the same way that other diets over time have been popular? I mean, there's no doubt about that. If, if only people knew what happened in the town we were from uh, with, with this thing, it was like, uh, it was like an epidemic. Um, people were coming out of the woodwork saying that, uh, all sorts of things about gluten and their, their allergies. And, um, I mean, it, it was clear that that number of people, it would, it would have just been impossible. Uh, uh, one of my cousins, uh, my cousin's wife has very serious celiac disease where if she even goes into a pizza, uh, into a pizzeria, where there is just a uh, flower dust in the air, she will become sick, right? That is a serious uh, celiac disease case. A lot of these we don't know. And, and the thing with these studies, Lewis, is that we have to remember 
uh, one study saying one thing or one study saying another thing is not really scientific evidence of anything. What we are seeing from these studies, to me, is nothing conclusive whatsoever, but that we, we certainly don't really know for sure whether the so-called gluten sensitivity is really something that is of epidemic proportions or if merely the idea of it is what is taking on an epidemic proportion. Right. Uh, we need more research, but it's certainly the craze certainly hasn't stopped a lot of companies from uh, profiting big time off uh, marketing gluten free. Mil uh, 15 billion in 2016 is the estimate in gluten free products that will be sold. So we know it is very, very profitable. I wonder if we will see studies funded by some of those companies that come out with results that say, oh, no, 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 no. Gluten sensitivity is a very, very common thing. We'll see. And of course, we will analyze those and, and evaluate them as they deserve to be evaluated. On today's show, we have This Week in Show History. We have your audience questions. We also have a classic interview that I think you're going to love that combines precious metals, listen to this, with prophecy. Precious metals with prophecy. Glad you're with us on this second Friday show. We are member supported and there's a whole other show that we do just for our supporters. Get all of those member benefits right now by going to davidpackman.com slash